Hi. First of all, you guys, what is Owl working? Hi, Owl. There's a little How bit of a lag. Doing? Oh, there's a lag. Okay, Owl, I'm talking to you right now. There you Owl, go. Owl's not listening. I'm going to put Owl in the corner. Is listening? Okay. All right, good. There I am. Hi. I don't even say, I don't see how this even works. Whatever. It's great. First of all, I know. I'll talk to you guys. Um, first of all, round of applause for Leela, who did her first intro. <laughs> You knocked it out of the park, girl. Yeah, we were having a nice conversation before about improv because I'm an improviser. So yeah, welcome to behave, behaving, behaving like an entrepreneur because I'm trying to behave here. Um, <laughs> tell me when I can advance it. Awesome. So you're in the right pot, right spot. I'm glad to see you. Um, I also want to acknowledge that Felicia Rubenstein is here and she founded, did I get that wrong? Oh, um, right. Please dear God. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to just messing everything up, but she founded Haven and it's like such an honor to have her here. So thank you for being here. Um, okay, let's get started. Oh, maybe if I point it here, maybe not. I might just have to say advance. Okay, I got you. Okay, so I always forget to tell you how to find me. I was a classroom teacher for 34 years. So I am used to just giving away information for free and then the kids go home and play. I'm not used to saying, and if you need to find me, here I am. So here I am at vividcottage.com. So can I just, did you start record? Yes. Okay. Oh, very good. Okay. So today's agenda, which was, I was gonna be able to control it. Um, today's agenda is story time and useful stuff. Let's go. How many people have seen Randy Pausch, The Last Lecture? Alicia knows it. Of course you do. If you don't, this is my gift to you today, along with the stickers on the table. It's incredible. Randy Pausch was a cognitive science professor at Carnegie Mellon, and he was invited to present what Carnegie Mellon calls The Last Lecture, and they challenged their professors to put together something that's really got all their heart and soul packed into one lecture. So he accepted to do it. And wouldn't you know that by the time he was presenting, it really was gonna be his last lecture because he had a terminal illness. Mm -hmm. He seemed perfectly fit. He demonstrated by doing push-ups on stage, but this was it for Randy. And it's one of the most goosebump worthy inspirational videos I've ever seen. So we'll go to the next slide. His Childhood Dreams, the subtitle of his talk, Randy Pausch, The Last Lecture, Truly Achieving Your Childhood Dreams. Uh, first of all, isn't he cute as a button in this picture? <laughs> um, and at his, you have to watch the talk to see how many of his childhood dreams it turns out he got. Next, what were your childhood dreams? Just take a moment, picture little you, and just be like, Oh, I haven't connected with that in a while. So just want to put that out there as an invitation. This was mine. I wanted to be an artist. So that's me on my grandparents' porch. And that's me because I'm also a goofball. Um, so I learned at a certain point that art is serious business. So this is me seriously showing my serious art portfolio to my serious cousin, Mike. <laughs> the serious continues in the next slide to my German expressionist phase in college. <laughs> Diane's laughing because Diane Weeks, by the way, local artist, very talented. She recognizes that we go through stages as art students. So there we go. I thought I was going to be an artist in New York City and I didn't fit in. And I didn't have money. So here's Joey Ramone doing all his epically cool stuff in 1986 in New York City. Wasn't going to be me. My thing was teaching. <laughs> I wound up, a sculptor friend of mine said, this is what you got to do. Then you got summaries, you can make your art. I was like, cool beans. I fell hard for the kids. So hard that I stayed in education. This is me in Westport, Connecticut, teaching my gifted middle schoolers for, I was here for 22 years, and I managed to infuse creativity into teaching. We built these giant rubber ducks out of chicken wire and plaster, and we paraded them around the Westport 
Westport Maker Fair to raise awareness of the great duck race by the Westport Rotary Club. So the kids all designed their own. So 33 years into a classroom teaching career that I thought I would never leave comes this. Mm, boom. Yeah. And at first, I did all the things. I hoarded the toilet paper <laughs> and I washed my hands a lot <laughs> and wore the handmade mask by another teacher buddy who went into business doing that because the first responders didn't have enough, baked all the bread. <laughs> um, and I tried to normalize it for the kids. So here I am teaching from my home office. It's still me. We can't get together, but I'm still here and I still love and appreciate you. I even did improv from my basement on top of a cardboard box. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we all found our resilient spirit. Um, and then the social injustice piece uh, became blatantly clear. So here I am at a protest with my husband, BJ. Hi, BJ, if you're listening. Um, I hope you are because you're the best husband. Um, <laughs> and, and, and at a certain point, I, I kind of had it. So next slide, I, I came to a complete standstill, which has never happened to me. I faced a lot of adversity, but I just ran out. It's like ran out of gas. So I came to a complete standstill. And here I am with my sweet husband, just lost at this point. I've always had a sense of purpose. I was, I was a single mom for years, but my daughter was launched in LA and I was just like, what? I don't, ugh. So I took some time and therapy is awesome. <laughs> I'm just here to say <laughs> it's the best. So is a life coach. So when I realized that so much had changed inside of me and outside of me, I thought it's time for me to do something different, which when you're 34 years into a career is pretty gutsy to say, yep, I'm stepping away and I'm going somewhere and I don't know where. So Lucia Knight was brilliant. I highly recommend her, look her up if you're having some midlife confusion. She's so funny. I really enjoyed her. She's smart. She helped me find my superpowers, my kryptonite, and figure out what the world wanted from me. So next slide. As, and what's also especially amazing is meeting an inspirational person. So I hope you're ready for this. So let me set the stage before you change the slide. I am glum, I'm at home, I'm on leave from teaching. I'm so depressed and anxious and sleepless that I won't even drive. I know I'm not safe behind the wheel of a car. So I'm just kind of like at a loss. And it's been winter and it's been COVID and it's been like, there's just been so much hammering up. So my cousin got in touch with me and invited me to visit Helena Hermark, who he was dating. Helena Hanmark, if you don't know who she is, she is from Sweden originally. She is an outstanding fabric textile artist. She weaves extraordinary pieces on a grand scale. So let's take a peek. First of all, how cute are these two? This is my cousin, Bill, and that's Helena. And you can just feel the vibe. Bill's wife had passed away after a struggle with cancer um, and uh, out of the blue came new love, which gives me hope. So the next slide is actually really cute too. Bill's an architect. So he deals with lines and numbers and that kind of stuff. She got him to start making portraits. Mm. So how cool is that when somebody is just willing to embrace something new? So we went around her studio. You can, Helena's down here. This is a mock-up of a gorgeous, entry to an elevator bank in a high rise building that she wove. And we got to see how she figured out how to take it along the ceiling, curve and go down. So you get this radiant sensation that you're tiny and you're among these gorgeous, beautiful blooms. Absolutely stunning. So exciting to see the mock, the mock up. And this is her studio. Oh, wow. yeah. oh I love that you all said, yeah. wow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ah, me too. <laughs> I have been oh starving God. for beauty, connection, love, inspiration, and especially art. I really missed going to like art galleries and mm -hmm. stuff. And being here where the artist has created this incredible space. She's in Ridgefield, by the way. Mm -hmm. She recently had a massive uh, gala in her honor at the Aldrich, I think, mm -hmm. in Ridgefield. Anyway, 
She's amazing. Uh, and they're so in love and it's so cute. Um, so I went right home to my little garage. I have a teeny tiny cape, you guys. My cape is like 1600 square feet built in 1949. And I have a teeny tiny single car garage. Well, I said, that's becoming my studio. So this is my studio. <laughs> it's a mess right now, but it looked pretty good in this picture. Anyway, uh, so then I started just drawing because my friend Kristen Borello of Muddy Feet Flower Farm brings her gorgeous bouquets to the Westport, Westport Farmer's Market and I buy them and I go home and I always would pass them by going like, oh, you're so beautiful. You're so pretty. Gosh, you're amazing. This time I drew it, which is a huge new step. Blew off my dusty evil, got started. That's Kristen. <laughs> Can you see how this is like reaching my spirit in a dark time? And so that's the completed drawing um, of the, I call it Dahlia Delight. It just looked like a fiery sunset. I loved it. So my sister, hi, Sarah, if you're listening or watching the video, because that might be what you're doing. Uh, my sister, Sarah Lister in Kentucky, in Lexington, she became my first customer. So she <laughs> bought this drawing right here. And it hadn't even occurred to me that these drawings were going to be like for anybody or anything. She's like, Charles and I want to buy that drawing. I'm like, what? I would just give it to you. She's like, no, we want to buy it because we think you've got something here. I was like, oh my God. Thank you, Sarah. So then that inspired me to create Christmas gifts. So I made a series of four cards plus notepads, and I brought samples of all my stuff that's in the back of the room. Um, and I was just giving them out to, for Christmas gifts. So I figured out how to print them and gave them out as Christmas gifts, and it felt really good. But I had a few left over. So, oh, this is me packing them up at the kitchen table <laughs> just to show you, like, yeah, I'm an artpreneur. Okay, next one. <laughs> this is Kristen said, hey, listen, I have a booth. Um, do you want to sell some of your cards here? And so that this is our little partnership. So Money Feet and my business was called Cup of Cards at the time, which I couldn't trademark, which is why it's changed. So I'll get into that soon. And now just some art. This mm. one's August Abundance. Hydrangea Hues. This one is called Delicate Blues. This one is called Peak Peonies. This is the one I just did recently. This one is October Bouquet. And these are all details. And this is Dogwood Delight. So that, I just wanted you to get a little sense of the art itself. And just for fun, I'm gonna show you some of the things I've made into products out of it because I've evolved since my first four cards. All right, so my boxed cards continue to be a bestseller. So on we go. This is my mom. Hi, mom. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Thanks for watching the video and the show. Uh, but I think the product was in the previous slide, a notebook. A note, notepad. So I've got those back here. And you'll notice I've got four different designs at the bottom because I really am a fan of stationery and I like little details like that. Okay, so happy mom. Framed prints. I taught myself how to do framing. I didn't mm -hmm. teach myself. The people at Jerry's Artorama taught me. Thank you, thank you, Ari, and all the guys at Jerry's Artorama. Um, did someone get kicked out and Welcome. for joining us? <gasps> how nice is that? Awesome. <laughs> hey, new person joining. Hopefully you can hear us. Oh, and this is what I'm super excited about. So someone encouraged me, I think Mary, Mary Ellen Hart at Imageworks encouraged me to start thinking about textiles, like tea towels and stuff. So this is an accent pillow based on my winter bouquet. And now you can have a bouquet you can hug. <laughs> <laughs> And tea towels, these things fly off the shelf as soon as I get a batch and put, put it out on Instagram and my Facebook and my email group, then people are like, oh, I gotta have some tea towels and they're doing really well. So that's very exciting. Um, now, I also recommend making a showstopper calendar. This calendar that's coming out, I, I, I've got the final proof, it's gonna go to the printer soon. It took me 180 hours to mm -hmm. make all of these drawings. Mm -hmm. Anne knows because <laughs> she's lived it, she's done it. Um, and it's a showstopper. It is. I'm so proud of it. I've been sharing them out as I go along, which is another idea. If you're an entrepreneur, just share your process. People really enjoy knowing that they're dealing with like a real human being and seeing the evolution. So then I wanted to talk to you about the new product that I've got in development. Um, I'm submitting the copyright. This 
I've always made by hand for 30 years. Everybody's got their wall space planned out. So a wall calendar can sort of look tacky on your wall. Everybody has a closet door. <laughs> and if you have a busy family that wants to be able to see the whole year at a glance, that's this product. So you, it's gonna be paper. It's gonna be pretty affordable. I'm working on the price. You take it to the inside of a closet and some kids like, I know I've got hockey, but so-and-so's in, in a school play. You open the closet door and the whole family can see what everybody's doing on one calendar for the year. You can sort of count down to your vacations. I did that not too long ago. I was like, yes, I'm going to Los Angeles to see Sophia and Rose. Hi, Sophia and Rose, if you're watching. <laughs> um, Anyway, so that is a brand new product I'm super excited to offer. I'm working out all the details. As promised, the first part was storytelling. Now comes the useful stuff. So this is if you are thinking of being an entrepreneur. Okay, let's go. Disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. What I'm sharing is my personal experience. Hire a pro. The first thing is to start. I have known so many people who have a dream and they're kind of thinking about it and kind of maybe just jump in. You saw me, I just jumped in and I made four cards and they were gifts and then someone's, and then it just kind of like, it kind of, grew. but if, if you're in motion, then things evolve and grow. But if you're sitting on the sidelines thinking about it, you're not, you're not moving. So start. Next of all, make it legal. And you will have access to all these slides. So please, you don't need to take any notes or anything, but you can, I don't care. Um, but I just don't wanna stress you out. Like I'm a de-stressed person. So I did my LLC in May. I established in both Delaware and Connecticut because we were thinking of retiring to Portugal, in which case Delaware is a pretty good place to have a basis for your business. Um, I have a DBA doing business as registered in the town where I live. I got my EIN number, which allows you to have a business checking account and employees and all that kind of stuff. Um, I opened a business checking account, business credit card, downloaded Mile IQ. This was one of the best tips I got from an entrepreneur. Download Mile IQ because that deduction is bigger than you think. Uh, you're allowed to deduct your mileage and stuff when you're a business. Okay, next slide. Get advisors. So um, I started with University of Hartford. They have a women's entrepreneurial center with a lot of kind people. And you get to hear a lot of people's stories. It's great. I'm now involved with the Women's Business Development Council. I've taken QuickBooks lessons, social media lessons, and I'm about to do their GPS class, which kind of really helps you map out a whole business. Highly recommend. I was just part of a pop-up shop with them a couple of weeks ago. Um, Jenny Pace. So do you remember that I had a UK-based uh, midlife career coach, Lucia Knight? Well, this, she's also UK-based. I don't know why this is happening to me, but I was following an artist. The artist was praising Jenny Pace. So I started following Jenny Pace. She's a business advisor to women who've got creative businesses. And so I started watching her on social media, getting to know the kind of advice she gave. I might've dropped in on a free thing or two. And then I just, I was, this is what I need. So I wake up at five in the morning <laughs> to be there for the 5.30 a.m. meetings on Tuesday and Friday. But Jenny walks us through all kinds of great things, like how to manage your numbers, how to, I'm already planning my Christmas marketing because Jenny's walking me through it. She is awesome. Jenny Pace, the Better Business Collective, highly recommend. Gotta have your attorney. I also have a trademark attorney because I have trademarked in process the name Vivid Cottage, which is one of my businesses, and Curate Your Mate. I am a dating mindset coach, um, <laughs> which I'll, I'll sneak that in there um, because, <laughs> because I was single in my 40s and a single mom and full-time working as a teacher. And I asked myself, hey, my life is pretty good. I could just not partner up with anybody. But I knew in my heart of hearts, I wanted to find the most extraordinary love. So I made all the mistakes, all kinds of mistakes dating. And I got better and better at it because I would study things and learn things and read books and try different things. Then I got to be like a pretty savvy dater. And I met my husband and we made it through this pandemic as such a team 
And I just want other people to feel that. So that's my other business, Curate Your Mate. So that <laughs> came about because we were talking about a trademark attorney. It is great to trademark your name. So just saying, it's expensive, but it's great. Um, and I hired a copyright advisor and for one session, and it was one of the best investments I've ever made. So now all my artwork is copyrighted with the US Copyright Office. And it takes time and whatever. But when I got that first certificate, it's so cool. I'll tell you more about that in a second. Um, and bookkeeper, or at least software, I am number phobic, but you cannot be because it's a business. And if you want the money, you got to do the numbers anyway, um, and a tax preparer. Okay, boom, next one. So this is my accountability buddy, Lori. Hi, Lori, if you're watching. Um, yeah, she burst out laughing because, hey, if it's accountability buddy time, I'm on the call, even if I'm dripping wet from the shower. So she, that's why she's laughing. Um, this is Jenny Pace, by the way. Oh, look, I adore her so much. So worth looking into her stuff. Jess Lenny designed my website. So when you visit my website and you see all the magic, she's the source of the magic. She is a brand strategist. Wah! She's amazing. So I just <laughs> Um, Alice Patterson, you may recognize all oh, the photos in Haven. That was the first time I came to Haven. A friend of mine invited me to do a professional photo shoot with Alice Patterson of loving my business and all the gorgeous photos of me going like, ah, ha, ha, and presenting and things like that. <laughs> That's Alice Patterson. So she rocks. So next time she comes to town, book it. Um, digital scanning. So if you are a visual artist and you need to turn your things from a paper or canvas medium, into a digital medium because that's how you make products to sell other than you're a fine artist and that's awesome. Um, digital scanning at Digi Imageworks in Westport. They work with professional artists um, who have a national and international profile. Their scanning machine is in a room the size of this room. The scanning machine bed is as big as this table. It was built in Germany. It's one of only four such machines in the US. And I just love working. This is Mark. That's Mary Ellen. And they're laughing because there's an actual fly that landed on one of my flowers oh, in oh this drawing. So that's, that's why they're chuckling. And this is another thing I want to tell you guys. This is why it's great to just get in motion. You meet the nicest people. That's how I met Diane. I met Diane through Imageworks. One of her books was on the shelf. I pulled it down. I was like, I must know this person. They're like, she's in Darien. We'll introduce you. Great. And now where is she? She's here at my talk. This is so great. So another point to just get moving, people. You'll meet wonderful people. All right. The next one is... Chiway printers in Norwalk. All the lovely things that I print on paper are put together at Chiway. We use them too. And they, do you use them too? Oh, Donnie is like my best friend. Here's Donnie. Uh, he is amazing. He's so kind to me. Suzanne is the designer who makes my knockout calendar. And she does uh, the labels. So when you see my boxes and stuff, those of you who are here in person, flip over and look at the, at the labels. You'll see there's like a little shadow effect and stuff. That's because Suzanne has a really good eye. She's a terrific designer. So, and I also believe I'm, all right, little feminist rant here. Um, I don't <laughs> like this whole, like, I'm a self-made man. Nobody helped me. Baloney, you had a mom. Um, <laughs> so I love throwing credit to other people who help me move along. Okay. And marketing, this is so exciting. Get in touch with me if you want someone to help you kickstart your social media. Allison just graduated from college. I've known her since she was born because she's my neighbor. She's also an amazing video editor. So she's helping me do my Instagram and my Facebook and product photos and all kinds of things at a very affordable place. Get in before she blows up people. I'm just saying, um, I'm like, like you've seen it, you know, you've seen it. You've seen people start out and they're like super affordable and then like, bam, Oprah hired me. So now it's $10,000 or more. Anyway, Allison's great. Pricing is key. So if you're an artist and an academic like me, money has been the furthest thing from your mind because you're like, I just give because education is great because the kids need me and I give and I give my art as a present. You can't do that and be a business. So you've got to learn pricing and I'm still in the process of learning it. Jenny Pace is really helping me with that. So next slide, copyright. 
This is the coolest thing, you guys. I didn't even know this existed until I started looking into licensing my art and then licensing led to copyright. Copyright led me to a woman named Cheryl Phelps and I hired her for a consultation and she taught me how to do the copyright thing. Um, so, and I just did some last night and I've got some more to do today. Uh, anyway, that slide will tell you how to do it. Uh, there we are. So you can, you can register up to 10 unpublished works all together for 85 bucks. And you can register one published. So like my, my calendar from last year published. So you register that for $65. So when you do your drawings, register them as a batch of 10 and you'll save some money. Uh, the other cool thing is when you have done a copyright, it's something you can pass on to somebody else as an inheritance. So it's yours for your whole lifetime, your copyright. And then when you're no longer on the planet in this form that we know about, um, there's an additional 70 years that whoever you pass that copyright to, they get to do what they want. So I have a vision of my daughter after I'm gone, somebody is like, oh, you know, we'd, we'd like to make some products with your mom's artwork. And then it's a way that my daughter can make money from something that I created because I copyrighted it. So that's a pro tip from Kirsten, artpreneur. <laughs> Next one, sales tax, just pay it. Just pay it, register, pay it, pay it on time. You don't want the tax man after you. So that's all that is. Money mindset. So you may have heard me allude to the fact that I've been a teacher for 34 years. So I've been focused so much on ideas and enlightenment and empowerment that money has, I've always managed it, but I've always had a steady salary. This is different. Be having your own business is you're steering the ship, you're setting the agenda, you're visualizing where you're going, and it's a different skill set. And just like anything, if, you're, if you want to learn yoga, you study from people who do yoga. You want to learn, you know, all the money mindset is something you have to learn. And you've got to dig out some of the trolls that were planted in you as a kid and say, nope, you don't serve me anymore. Get rid of it. Denise Duffield Thomas is terrific. She's got a podcast you can start listening to. I just read her book, Chill and Prosper, that just came out this year. And it's helping me kind of shake off uh, some things that were holding me back. So I recommend that. I know it seems woo-woo, but it's practical. <laughs> um, then my other piece of advice as an artpreneur, an artist is by nature someone who is just a little bit more perceptive. You tune into things that are subtly going on around you. You feel things emotionally in your body. It's like, it's part of your gift but it's also part of what can hurt. So curate the input, feed your mind good stuff, set healthy boundaries, have wise media consumption. Uh, I remember back in New York, I used to watch the news before bed and then I couldn't sleep. This is back in the nineties. So I learned to just shut up, don't do that. Read the newspaper in the morning. It'll, the news can wait until then. Uh, follow artists who are different from you. So I started following some artists who were doing similar things. And I was like, oh, they're better at this. <laughs> they're making more money than me. They're more popular. Look at how many followers they have. When I shifted and started following artists who are like different, like this one's doing like new age dog portraits. I can be like, go you. So <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And I'm just being human here. Uh, follow artists who are different from you so that you're still getting that sort of like sense of creative community. But if you're too similar and too close, some of that like competitive energy can get in there and see kind and generous souls. And live as if, live as if you are already living your dream. Live as if you are enough because you are. Live as if you have a lot to give. Be generous with your encouragement. You have wonderful people on your side because you do. Express gratitude to those people daily if you can. And if you want to talk, if you're thinking about doing it and you need a cheerleader or something, or you want to ask some specific questions, I'm all about encouragement. The world needs your talent. There's so much more I've learned beyond what I could pack in today. I spoke fast. There were about 90 slides. So, <laughs> and I know I, there's so much more. Like we didn't even get to Lisa Congdon. 
This is one of the best books for being an art artpreneur. It's called Art Inc. by Lisa Congdon. I've read so many books, you guys, and met so many people. I've got tons and tons of information. I have links, baby, for all the stuff that I mentioned and more. Just email me at info at vividcottage.com. Just like when I hired Cheryl Phelps to talk to me and she took me in a whole new direction, I want to serve that kind of role for people who are a few steps earlier in the stages. So, yeah, and I'm a businesswoman, so it's definitely something I will charge for because I'm a consultant. <laughs> um, back to Randy Pausch. This is one of the quotes from his book. The key question to keep asking is, are you spending time on the right things? Because time is all you have. That's it. Thank you for being here. You got this. I can't wait to see what you make. Thank you for joining us today. And there's one more slide so you can find me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being here.